we all love to swap faces with the help of ai this is one of the most common use case i have seen with stable diffusion based models and tooling there are a lot of tools out there which enable you to exchange or swap the faces with the help of stable diffusion or various other models and tools such as using control net lora models and all that stuff in this video i am going to show you one of the easiest ways to swap faces in the images either through text prompts or from image to image by using stable diffusion all local all private all offline before i move forward i would really like to stress upon the fact that this is all for educational and training purposes please don't use any um of these tools for any other nefarious purposes because that is not the aim and that is not the goal so that disclaimer out of the way in this video i will be using few tools such as reactor which is an extension for stable diffusion if you don't know what stable diffusion is stable diffusion is a model an ai model which enables you to convert or create images from text that is all stable diffusion does if you want to learn more about stable diffusion and these tools i would highly suggest just search my channel and you should be able to find heaps of videos on it i have just done a video today which i will um, be posting it shortly we can also go through it so this is just an ex extension this reactor and this is an extension of a tool called as automatic 1111 or the older name or some people say the newer name is stable diffusion web ui stable diffusion web ui is a simple application which provides you a graphical user interface to create images from text or images from images by using stable diffusion models and there are a lot of models out there so we will be uh, using this automatic 1111 application which again if you don't know what it is how to install it please search my channel and you should be able to find a video now i will also be showing you a very quick way of installing it very easy way and that way is through another tool called as stability matrix so if you are looking to install tools for your stable diffusion models i would highly suggest have a look at stability matrix seems like a very good tool to me through which you can install automatic 1111 now this is a tool which i was referring to so do this go to my channel click on this uh, search and just type stability matrix and you should be able to find a video around it i haven't posted it yet but it will be as by the time you watch this video so check out that video and install stability matrix from there just a quick one the installation is very simple just go to the github repo of stability matrix and from there if you are looking to do it for windows just click here it is going to download an zip file for Linux, it is going to download and zip file, download it, unzip it. And once you unzip it, it will be something like this. This is a zip file. After unzipping, it will look like this. And then you will have an app image or if you are using Windows, it will be an XE. Just double click it. It is going to launch it for you, the whole application. Once you launch that application, you will be presented with something like this packages. From there, you will see that there are a lot of packages for example stable diffusion and all so click on add package once you will add package click on stable diffusion web ui once you will click it and click on install it is going to install the automatic 1111 or in other words stable diffusion web ui for you and as you just saw i already have it installed so if i click on packages and if you click on launch it is going to launch it in your browser like i already have it here so this is how you install first um, stability matrix this one then you install automatic 1111 that's done and then you launch it through stability matrix as i just showed you so i know there there are few tools but if you just run it slowly the video and do it it's very simple so i'm assuming that you already have no stability matrix installed first then you have launched this automatic 1111 
through stability matrix and it is now running here. Now it is the time to install this reactor extension which enables you to do the phase swap. So how do you do that? In this automatic 1111 go to extensions here at the, the last tab and then you can just click on um, check for updates or all this stuff but for us we are just going to click on install from URL and then you would just need to enter the URL of that reactor repo so just go here grab this whole URL come back here and then you can just paste it here because it is a URL of the git repo and then you just need to click on install button okay so you might get this error if that happens then if you are on windows make sure that you have visual studio 2022 installed if you don't have it then you need to install it otherwise it won't work on linux and mac if you get an error through this repo url then go to available and then you see that you can load it from this url or the best way is to just click on this load from and then just wait for it because it, sometimes it just takes a bit of a time and if it doesn't happen you see it's the same um, connection timeout error that is fine let's wait and we will try again or you can just try refreshing it from here let's wait for it let's try again there you go you see i know this is not ideal but these are the open source tools which have these quits so you just have to try again after waiting for a bit okay so now we have all the available extensions here in the search box just type or just um, paste reactor and you will see that now it was able to find it just click on install at the top in the right hand side action and once you click it it is going to install it you would have to wait three to four minutes in order to get it installed so let's wait And after a few minutes, you will see this message that installed here in this path. And then um, if you go back here in the installed folder, you should also see that reactor here after the restart. Or you could just click on refresh here or from the right hand side. And then you will see at the very end that reactor is installed. And normally what I do is, you know, after installing this stuff, I just um close the existing window like this and then i just go back here and then i just click on launch or i just click on restart so let's wait for it to restart it's always a good idea just it just clean uh, just makes it a clean restart of your software so that you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff so let's wait for it it is just going to open it again in your browser window and once the automatic 1111 is relaunched, if you see that there is a reactor checkbox here on the left hand side, just select it. This is the one I just made up orange block on it. Scroll down and then you will see that there are a few other tabs which uh, are appearing. If you don't see them, just click on this downward arrow and you will see all the options from the image. Upload the image where you want to swap the uh, face. So just click here on drop image for example i'm just going to go into my local images and then i'm just going to grab one of my own image this is just a sample image make it uh, make sure that it is close up and off the face and then make sure that you have checkbox this face ma uh, mask correction and you can leave the rest of it as is uh, you can change it later on i mean you can gender detect and all that stuff but i'm just going to keep it as is i will let it do all the uh, grunt work around just checking the image and all that stuff so if you go up you can just now give your prompts here so i'm just going to give it a text prompt to swap the face and if you scroll up in the positive prompt i'm giving it portrait photo of one superman close up upper body night city outdoors blonde hair and then the negative prompt which i don't want it to appear is that it shouldn't be blurry it shouldn't be deformed there shouldn't be any text it shouldn't be ugly cartoonist or illustration 
so that is cool now there are a few other settings which you can set if you like for example for the image size as here image width is 512 maybe you can give the size to let's say 768 pixels that is fine cfg scale is uh, 7 just let's set it to 6 and then how many steps are there so batch size i just want one uh, image to be produced one is fine here and then you can leave rest of it as is i don't think so anything else is needed so sampling steps it says 20 let's make it 30 it will take a bit more time to refine it but we'll just go with that one and if you don't know what these cfg and all this stuff is it is actually i have covered it on my channel previously so if you're interested you can search um, what these values are in great detail i'm not going to go into this detail again here so um, these are primarily just to make sure that your image is good enough and it doesn't deviate from your prompt and doesn't make model too creative let's keep seed as is i think this is this should be it so let me click on generate here so i'm just going to scroll up and then just click on generate here let's wait for it it is using my image and it is creating it like this and there you go you see so first it generated an image of superman and then it took my image and have as has swapped the face there looks uh, quite okay to me now there is a slight blurriness if you see so in order to remove it let me scroll down and then wherever that re actor is so you see that i'm just scrolling down at the moment it is slightly slow for me there you go so you see right now it says that um, at the moment this code former weight fidelity is this you can uh, move it to zero far from original or close to original if you like and code former is already selected so if you want to remove that blurriness you can go with this but i think this is okay at the moment and but if you're not satisfied you can move it a bit uh, further and regenerate it but for me i think it is quite good now if you compare my image with this image it has really swapped the face here and if you want to increase the you know fidelity of or more um, you want to make the image more refined click on upscale here and then you will see that it says that restore face to upscale uncheck if you want or vice versa but we are just checking it for the upscaler there are a lot of options there so i normally always go with this resr gen 4x plus upscaler i find it quite performant so i have just selected it and then you can just do it scale by two maybe two or i think two is good enough but what you can also go with four or six but two is i find that quite good so i have select the scale by we have set the upscaler so go up and then click on generate again and then you just have to wait it is you see it is it has created the image first from our text prompt and then it is going to swap this face with my own face this doing something let's wait for it looks quite good it is quite upscaled the lighting is there and all that stuff good stuff so this is all and well but the real fun starts when we swap the face from image to image you can also do that with this reactor let me show you how let me take you there let's go scroll up and we would need to go to this image to image now in this image to image what we need to do first is that we just need to scroll down keep scrolling down and you will see the reactor here just click on it and open this from the arrow button and then from here you would need to uh, select your source image so let me select my same image what i selected earlier this is the image i will put on to any other image and then there are few options which you need to make sure are selected make sure that this face mask correction is selected code former is selected you can leave things here and make sure that this swap in source image is 
select it and then scroll up and select the image where you want to replace the face with so i'm just going to select another image from my local system so this is the image where i want to put my face in instead of this face okay and there is one more configuration here we need to change so scroll down a bit and you see where it says denoising strength make sure that it is set to 0.125 so that it will be uh, denoised properly there won't be too many variations there and then for the image size you can go with maybe something uh, 1200 and then just keep it maybe to 766 it just depends upon your choice cfg scale i normally go always with six and then for sampling steps again i always go with 30 but you can go with 20 if you think that's better but i always select uh, this one uh, for the sampler if you just see it's a dpm plus plus 2m so normally i go with if you see here there are a lot of options here like dp uh, m plus 22m st hewn and you scroll down so what it has selected is fine i'll just use it doesn't matter really this is a good one so scheduler type is also good and i think and because uh, we don't have to because we are doing image to image so we don't have to add any prompts of course and once that's done you just leave this prompts empty and click on generate here and then we just have to wait for a bit so let's wait and there you go you see so it has replaced it with my face and it is magic really it is really good it has even put up French cut uh, beard on my face but the hat is there so if I just quickly go down and this is my face it has put in this face here on in the place of another one so you can save it and then you can use the text prompt to further refine it how good is that so I think this is one of the easiest and best way of swapping the face in your uh, images just pick your images and go crazy with it and i'm sure you must be wondering how much gpu vram it is using at the moment while we are running it let me show you but before that let me introduce you to the sponsors of this video which are agent ql agent ql is a query language for extracting data from web pages quickly easily and at scale you can use the python sdk to run your queries in production using playwright and use the browser based debugger for optimizing queries in real time on any web page agent ql is a robust alternative to fragile xpath and dom css selectors as it uses the power of ai to analyze the page structure to find the data you are looking for i will also drop the link to their website in video's description so let me quickly open another terminal window and then let me show you in real time how much vram it is using at the moment i'm just going to run this nvidia dash smi so you see it is just using under 3200 mb how good is that so if you have a 4 gb vram i think this should work and i believe you can even run it on cpu because it is very lightweight it is doesn't require much and you can it will take a bit of a time on cpu but i think if you have gpu 4 gp vram that will be awesome and you already saw the speed so that's it i hope that you enjoyed it if you did please consider subscribing to the channel and if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching